welcome to Empowering. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel and welcome to Anatomy 101. In this video, we're going to review the different types of muscle tissue. We're going to go over cardiac smooth and skeletal muscle tissue. We will go over the functions and the characteristics of each. We will also learn about contractility, excitability, extensibility, and elasticity. Now this is the 16th video in this video series, so if you would like to start from the beginning, make sure you check out the link above. Now if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, please do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up, post a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Alright guys, let's get right into it. Did you know that muscles make up about half of your body weight? Without muscles, we would all literally just be skin and bones. The first thing you need to learn about our muscles is that it is composed of three different types of tissues. Cardiac, smooth, and skeletal. Cardiac muscle. The cardiac muscle can be found in the myocardium. Myo meaning muscle and cardiac meaning heart. Its job is to contract and relax depending on the signals sent by the cardiac conduction system. Under the microscope, cardiac muscle appears striated, meaning the fibers of the cell are in a parallel arrangement. This makes the muscle strands or striations visible. Moreover, the parallel arrangement makes it possible for the muscle to contract and relax. That is why the heart is so effective in pumping the blood throughout the body. Smooth muscle. Smooth muscle can be found on the walls of the hollow organs. That's why it makes sense that it is non-striated, because it's smooth. You see, hollow organs like the alimentary canal need to be flexible so that certain movements can be achieved. The alimentary canal is the area from the mouth to the anus where food passes. For instance, when we swallow food, peristalsis is required to bring it down to the stomach. Peristalsis is the involuntary constriction and relaxation that helps food pass through the gastrointestinal tract. Other organs where you can find the smooth muscle are the urinary bladder and the uterus. At this point, notice that the contraction and relaxation of the cardiac and smooth muscle, despite being different in appearance, are both involuntary. The only type of muscle tissue where movement is in our control is the skeletal muscle. The skeletal tissues are attached to the bones. When we need to move a certain part of our body, the skeletal tissue will follow our command. Because movement needs flexing, it follows that these muscles are also striated. Well, that's the gist of it. But we are now moving to more in-depth discussion about the structure and function of our muscles. The special functional characteristics of muscle tissues. Despite the different types, all muscle tissues share functional characteristics that allow them to perform their functions. Listed here are the special functional characteristics. Contractility, what sets muscle tissues apart from other types of tissues is its ability to contract. To imagine this, think about flexing your biceps. When you flex, the frontal muscles contract. If you want to extend your arms again, then the posterior muscles will be the ones contracting. This means that our muscle tissues are only capable of pushing and not pulling. Excitability. Excitability happens when our muscle tissues respond to a change in the environment, or what we call a stimulus. Once a stimulus is received, it will trigger nerve impulses, which will be interpreted by the brain, and the brain will command the muscles to react immediately, even without thinking. Think of touching a boiling pot. You don't think about removing your hand, it's automatic. Extensibility. If the muscles can contract, then they can certainly stretch or extend. This characteristic is a great partner to the muscle's ability to shorten. Elasticity. Now, after the muscles have stretched and shortened, it must be able to return to its original form and shape. It's a good thing muscle tissues are elastic. The functions of muscle tissues. Muscle tissues are created not just for protection, but also for mobility. Together with the bones, muscles can move internal and external body parts. Let's discuss some of the other most notable functions of muscles. Maintenance of posture. Did you know that our muscles, even without us noticing, are constantly contracting for us to maintain a certain stationary position? For instance, you wouldn't be able to sit for hours if the muscles won't constantly contract. Heat generation. 
Earlier, we've established that muscles make up about 50% of the total body weight. What do you think will happen if almost half of our body weight cannot regulate temperature? Homeostasis becomes impossible. When our muscles shorten, they are able to generate heat. This function is especially important when our core body temperature drops. We tend to shiver and shake and generate heat. Stabilizing joints. You must agree that our joints are vulnerable. After all, they glue two different skeletal parts. Joints can be easily detached, but since muscles protect their stability, we can worry less about their integrity. All right guys, I really hope you liked that video going over the different types of muscle tissues. Make sure you stay tuned because in the next video we're going to dive deep into the skeletal muscles. We're going to learn about the fascinating and complicating components that make up skeletal muscle cells. You will learn how each skeletal muscle cell has nerves, fibers, blood vessels, connective tissue, and more. We will also take a microscopic view of a skeletal muscle cell, where we will see things like the plasma membrane or or in a muscle cell which is called a sarcolemma, organelles and myofibrils. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Also, if you are studying anatomy and physiology, make sure you become a member of my channel because I've uploaded my best-selling program, How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology. Obviously, there's a lot more that goes into studying than just watching videos. And in this program, I take you through exactly how to go through and learn and comprehend things from the book. I also share amazing test taking tips and I go through how to strategically approach your professor to get the best outcome. All that and more, so make sure you become a member of my channel if you are in fact taking anatomy and physiology or about to take anatomy and physiology. Alright guys, thanks so much again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!